What's up guys? In today's video, we go deep sea fishing for wahoo. We show you exactly how to catch wahoo, how to fillet or clean wahoo, and how to eat this beautiful fish. This adventure begins right now. Good morning everybody, Dar Sizzle here. We are headed out on this glorious morning. We have no wind conditions. We are headed out on the big boat today, our center console, and we are targeting wahoo. We're gonna wahoo troll for a little bit, and then we're gonna switch it up. If we don't get a wahoo, we're gonna bottom fish. We got a full moon going on. I'm excited. We're going out the inlet now. Gee Sizzle, that was the most excited I've seen you in this early in the morning in quite, quite some time. I've been up for two hours. <laughs> you know, it's fishing hard, you gotta coffee. get gas, coffee. That's a nice grizzly cup you have there, by the way. They make coffee cups too, great for gifts. And uh, yes, we're all set. So this is, uh, Darcy has a full moon, we checked that fish angler app. And also today is gonna be the only day where you can really get out sore, but a big storm's coming, or front's Cold coming, fronts. for next week or so. So we checked that with the waves and the wind, you can check all that stuff on the app. So uh, today's the day to go, so let's get out there. I'm going the same speed. Should I cut and turn? Slow down? Good. Hooked up guys. We just managed to get two lines out and we just hooked up. We're trying to keep the boat in gear. It's a little bumpy out here, swelly. Got hard conditions and there's only two of us. Oh, he's still on, which is a good thing. I can't believe it, guys. I can't believe it. I can't plan believe came it. together. We were so shell shocked over the last couple days. Wahoo in the boat! Within five minutes of trolling and a pink and white sea witch with a strip that I made, Benita strip. Beautiful Wahoo. Yes. Oh, that was awesome. All right, got a bunch of pictures. Josh is putting them on ice. And I don't know, maybe we can get another one. Or maybe I can go home early. I'm not sure. What do you think, Sizzle? Going home early or are we going to catch another? What do you say? We're catching another! <laughs> she says we're catching another. Starting off the day within five minutes like that, it just never happens. I'm blessed. We're blessed. I want to give you guys a tackle time on how we caught that Wahoo today. And it's kind of a combination of a bunch of things we've really been showing you, actually. In the last video, we talked about gear. I showed you this pink sea witch, and I showed you our Shimano TLD 50s and our, uh, and our rods. And I told you that we just keep this on the rod all the time and use this just about every time we go fishing for the planer. So this is all you need to catch a big wahoo like that. This is called a sea witch. It's pink. These cost about $5. Then you get a double hook rig. These, uh, whoa, look at the hook, honey. It's bent out. They're still on the camera. So it's hooked a little bent out from that big fish. But these hooks, I just actually got from a double-rigged uh, ballyhoo or a double-rigged uh, mullet. And then once you're done using the bait you bought, you can just use this. I actually got another one right here. We'll use this one probably next. And you just put a bonita strip, which you can catch your own bonitas, and then you can cut your own strips. Darcy has an IGTV video all about that, cutting the strips and rigging these. It's very simple. So then the bonita strips are free. These hooks are like free, and this thing's like five bucks. So I got like $10 into this thing, and I'm catching 40-pound wahoo. Do you see that? Now. 
This is tied directly to the hook. I got no wire. So people think that's kind of risky. That's how you gotta get the bites once in a while. This is a 60 pound mono leader. It's about 60 or 80 feet long to my planer. And let me show you how I do my planer. Try to do this real quick for you. Here's your planer. If you've never heard of one of these things before, your line goes here. If your line goes, which way does it go? Yeah, your line goes here. Your line goes to this end right here. This is to the rod. And when you're in the water, it's, it's going, this goes down and your leader is here, okay? Most people have this tied on. And so you get to the tip and you have to hand line this. That's no good. That's no fun. We don't like to do it that way. Darcy and I are here all, all by ourselves. It's a little rough, even like today on a small boat. You want to have a wind on. So let me show you how that works. We use a bridle system, which is very popular, like in North Carolina. First, I'm going to let this, I'm going to let this out so I can show you the bridle. I'll put it in gear. We'll do a little time lapse here. You see, there goes my bridle. Now guys, when I'm deploying, I got these clips. The first one's gonna go close to the boat. Here's my bridle. I reach over, and I got loops on my bridle. You can buy these bridles. I just made mine out of some heavy braid with some down loops. See, there you go. Pull this one up. La -da -da. All right, now I'm fishing. I throw that out, and I'm doing my plane of fishing with a bloop, blah, 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 I'm fishing, yada, yada, yada. There's a wahoo on, what do I do? Keep the boat in gear, I reel, reel, reel. Now, if I didn't have a bridle, I'd have to hand line this long leader and it would be very tricky. But no, I'm just gonna take this off, take off this, these loops, and the fish, the boat's moving, the fish is under pressure, this is very easy. I got like 80 feet out there, so it's no problem. Now I'm just gonna take this right through, and now I got a wind on. Now when I get to the fish, to the boat, just like you saw, like we just did, time lapse. Here goes my fish. Look how close, I can just reel it right to the tip. All right, I mean, I'm not gonna reel it to the tip in real life, but now I got the fish, I can control it instead of hand lining, and I can gaff it, and we're all set. That's how you do it. Alright y'all, we are back at the house and it's time to officially weigh our wahoo. We didn't bring the scale on the boat, but I also wanted to mention my fish hook and anchor bracelets for sale. Holidays are coming up real fast. This is a great stocking stuffer for adults and kids alike. Unisex bracelets available and also the sterling silver necklaces that I make. But let's just dive right into this. He's in the 165 quart grizzly and I was hoping he's going to be pushing 40, but they usually look a lot bigger on the boat and then when you bring them home, they end up being smaller, they shrink somehow. But that's a nice fish regardless, can't they, complain. They lose a lot of blood and they lose a lot of uh, water weight. How much? I'd say... You need my muscles? Yeah, I might, I might need your muscles. I'd say 30 pounds. Wow. But he looks wow. way bigger. I was honestly going to say like 37, 38. That's a big fish. Yeah. Holy crap. He probably lost two or three pounds, but still, he wasn't, yeah. <laughs> not 36. What I, did you guess? I thought it was going to be 37. All right, so I win. I get a kiss. All right. All right, so now <laughs> we got to get him nice and chilled down. He's a little hot right now. Get him all chilled down so we can go ahead and fillet him up later. That's the key to success when filleting fish. We'll see you in a couple minutes. Time to fillet up the Wahoo, but first, I think I deserve a land shark lager because that was such a lucky catch and that never happens to us within five minutes of fishing. And I want to show you really quick too how to sharpen one of these Smith Consumer product knives because a lot of people are scared to sharpen knives and with these adjustable pull through knife sharpeners, they're freaking so sweet. The cool thing about this one is the fact that it has a, an adjustable angle that you can adjust to what you want, whether it's for kitchen or sport knives. So for fillet knives, I'm just gonna push it down and go to the 16 degree angle, which is for standard for fillet knives. And it's got a coarse serrated for serrated knives and a fine slot, which is ceramic. And I'm gonna be using the fine slot because my knife is pretty sharp. So I just wanna get a couple quick pulls but this will hone your knife real nicely and get a nice sharp edge on it. And honestly, after every fish you fillet, you should always go ahead and sharpen your knife again just to keep that edge nice and sharp. But again, don't forget about my coupon code for 15% off all their products on Smith's website, Darcizzle15, plus free shipping. So all of these products, everything that you see here and on their store, just use my code and you'll save all that money. So just sharpen it four to six times, pull through four to six times, just gonna clean off the blade, 
Now we're gonna get right into filleting this fish. So for this fish, he's a big one, big fish. I'm gonna be using their nine inch Lawaya coated saltwater fillet knife. So I'm gonna pull him closer to me. It's been about two months since I filleted that last Wahoo. So I'm just gonna try to get as much meat as I possibly can off this guy because we love our fresh sushi. sushi. Wahoo sushi doesn't get much better, it's the best. So you can see how I just angled that right up towards the head to try and get as much head meat as possible. I just really like to take care of my fish, especially after we catch such a beauty like this guy. Now I'm just running that knife along his backbone. Right here by the top dorsal fin, the skin is a little tough, but you want that sharp knife to get right through it. And then just follow it all the way down. Can't wait to see these loins. They're gonna look amazing. Push through the tail and go out. Then I'm just gonna make some nice long strokes, get down so I can see what I'm doing here. You can see how I'm bending that knife a little bit. I like a flex in a knife. That's just me personally. And I know I'm working with a big piece here, but I'm gonna cut it. So I'll show you right now to make it manageable. So I'm gonna cut them like right here. Oh, look at that piece of fish. Wahoo for days. Look at those gorgeous loins. Look how they like glimmer. It's just a beautiful fish. If you've never had Wahoo from any restaurant or anything, I highly recommend you try, try one. So I think it's the best fit, one of the best tasting fish in the ocean. Wahoo steaks, that's how you do it. You got three beautiful thick steaks. You can see I, I did a pretty good job here on this fish. Honestly, I have to do this, it's my ritual. Look a little bit of meat there, but it's not going to waste because I'm gonna eat it raw. Fishy fingers and all. Oh yeah, baby, that is awesome. And once again, I'm just really blessed that I get to go out there and do this. And you guys are watching my videos and I would not be doing this for a living if you guys weren't watching. So I'm just really that appreciative and I really respect all the fish that I catch and I take extra good care of them. And now we can't wait to go cook them in the house for y'all. So I'm going to finish up the other side of this fish and then I'll meet you in the house for the cooking with pudding portion of this video. Although we might not, not be doing a whole lot of cooking. <laughs> all right, good job playing that fish. Stress We're about to cook it. But I want to let you guys know, it's, it was just after Veterans Day, so I called one of my favorite veterans, Marcus, and gave him some Wahoo. Show him the Wahoo. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you very much. You haven't all, been out there in a couple years. Yeah, he's, I want to tell you guys also that, you know, we always talk about following your dreams on here, and this guy, he was in the Army. He served his country. He came out, and then he went to law school, and now he's a big trial attorney over at the... Palm Beach Public Defender's Palm Office. Palm Beach Public Defender's Office, and he's like... Following his dream. Following his dream. So you guys can do it too. <laughs> When you're young or you're old, and, or if you have two kids, you can do it also. Right? <laughs> That's not easy to go to law school when you have two kids when you're 29 years old. No. Nope. Right, it's it's never too late to follow your dreams, for sure. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, we're going to get right to cooking. <laughs> Welcome, guys, to another edition of Cooking Wood Pudding. We finally got here. And thank you, Marcus, for your service. And we got Josh Sizzle here, too, as our my, semi guest host. <laughs> now I want to remind just a couple things, points we got to go through real quick. Today we're going to be cooking seared Wahoo. It's going to be delicious. And first thing is to remind you guys about, just like I, what I mentioned about Marcus, just to review, Marcus went in the army. He went overseas to the desert. He got a college degree. He got a master's degree. He got married. He got two kids. Then he got divorced. Then he went to law school. And now he's 33 and a lawyer for the county. Yeah, I truly mean, amazing. If he, if he can do that, you guys can do anything. Trust me. Yeah. Right? Right? That's, that's incredible. Yeah, no, no, no. Brian's very proud of him. I, I love Mark. Aspiring <laughs> attorney. Well, now attorney. And Brian has, you know. Former attorney. I told former, him not to do it, but he did it anyway. <laughs> yes, he right. loves it. He loves it. So, next up, real quick. The fish angler app. I know we mentioned it before. Yes. And I showed you the, the little chart about when the minor moon phase was. We caught the fish in the minor moon phase right where the app said it was going to happen. Yeah. So sick. Anyway, so that totally worked. All right. Next, we're almost getting to cook it, don't worry. I told you guys that I'm a terrible person and we don't open the mail enough and we're gonna be opening up some mail during these cooking portions real quick. So, I'm gonna put on my glasses and I'm gonna shoot through two pieces of ancient mail. Yes, this one is from Sal. 
Yes, Sal Thank you from very much, Sal. Festerville or Featherville, Pennsylvania. Yes. And he does a lot of fishing up in Pennsylvania. Yes. And he was learning all about fishing. And then some, one of his friends gave him a magazine and it turned out that their sizzle <laughs> was on the mag. Was from a couple years back. It was on the magazine. It's from 2016 up yeah. in New York. Yeah. Uh, January 2016 is like the Northeast edition in Fisherman. So uh, thank you so much uh, for sending this over to us. He wasn't sure if you had one. Yes. But uh, Sal, if you're listening, we have a ton of these, a stack of them as high as my waist, which is about six inches. Yeah. And uh, well, we'd love to autograph this and send it back. So uh, hit us up on the email or in the comments and, and we'll get it right back to you. Yes. And he also said, thank you. Um, sorry for my loss of my dad. I really do appreciate that. And I just yep. wanted to say really quick, nobody really can relate to that unless you have gone through it yourself. Like Brian has lost both his, his parents. But being a caretaker for two and a half years, it takes a toll on you. So thank you very much, Sal. Yes. And he says, continue to fish, dream, and inspire. And always follow your dreams and keep on catching. So thanks so much. Secondly is, where's the box? Box. These, these guys, this is a charter captain from Savannah, Georgia. He sent us a huge box of gear. He sent us, like, this guy watches our videos. He sent us so <laughs> many things that I use on video. I'm yes. stoked to have. This is stuff we actually going to use. Look, yeah. Uh, kingfish rigs. This is so shiny. Islanders. We just showed you in our gear thing. Yes. Uh, kingfish little um, hat. I call them hats, but they're yeah. like little, uh, what do they call these? They're like mylar, um, like mylar head. They basically go on the top of a live bait to just to make extra shiny attraction. Yeah. But yeah, we call them. Even DOAs. We DOAs. love DOAs. Love DOAs. And a bunch of Yuzuri lures. Yuzuri. This box was filled to the top. All right. You just hooked us up. Thank you so much. If you don't mind, guys, this is Captain Alan Collins of Miss Judy Charters, also known as the Shark Whisperer and Captain Derek Medsker. If you guys are in Savannah, Georgia, check them out. They're big fans of the channel. Thank you so much, guys. You gave us so much gear, if you don't mind, we're gonna hand some out to kids when we see them on the water. Yeah. Now, a All lot right. of stuff I use, I'm gonna keep, but some of the other stuff we'll give out. Thank you guys so much. Really do appreciate the thoughtful gift. Soft plastics and all kinds of crap. Yeah, and the letter. We love it. Thank you very Handwritten much. Handwritten letter. All right, let's get to the cooking. All set now for some seared wahoo encrusted in sesame seeds. It's gonna be awesome. Let me tell you guys what I did for science. Typically when I do this recipe, we make up this nice sauce with all these ingredients you can see up here. And we've done that a couple times in the past, but I'm never satisfied with how the sesame seeds stick to the fish. I don't know if you guys ever did this before. The sesame seeds always fall off and then you Google it and there's 10 million different ways. So what we did today is I texted my good friend, Chef Jamie, and also Captain slash Chef uh, Dave Sugar down in Marathon. He runs Sweet Enough Charters. And if you're ever down in Marathon, He's the guy to charter with, okay? Sweet enough charters. We got videos. He's in the magazines. He's everything. So I'm gonna do what they're suggesting. Chef Jamie said, just put it in the sesame seeds dry, press firmly, put it in the pan. Chef Captain Sugar said, create a slurry of bake with a baking powder. No, what's this stuff, Sizzle? Cornstarch. <laughs> Make a slurry of cornstarch and water and put it in there and then put it in. So we're gonna try both methods and see if it works. I got my pan already all heated up, you can see here. It's very hot. And I'm gonna start with just putting it in the seeds dry. I got the fish all dry, and I'm gonna press firmly, like Chef Jamie told me to. Pressing firmly. It looks like there's a lot of them on there. Now I'm gonna place it in the hot, very hot, high heat with oil. Very important to have that pan nice and hot. And you're just gonna do this for like a minute on each side, maybe less. All right, that seems to have stayed on there pretty well. Let's try the slurry. I'm gonna put a little bit more oil because we soaked up a bunch. All right, stir up my slurry because the cornstarch settles, so you wanna get it. Nice and stirred up when you put it in the solution. All right, now I'm gonna press firmly in my sesame seeds. All right, that also looks pretty good. And I'm gonna call that done. All right, are you guys seeing this fish over here? This seared wahoo? Does it look ridiculous or what? I'm gonna give it a couple slices. I'm gonna show you my knife. It's actually a Smith Products knife. They have home stuff too. 
And let's just give this a shot and see how it works, see how it looks. Ooh. Looking good. Seems to be, both seem to be holding on pretty well, but let's take it to the table for the final test. All right, let's dive in. Trying to dive in, it smells really good. That's awesome. I need my land shark now. So yummy. Have you ever heard of that thing you're supposed to cut against the grain, like for meat to taste better or whatever? Yeah, Darcy yelled at me about the cutting, I guess. He you know, was I'm saying it was tough chef. to cut into, but he cut it with the grain. So I'm cutting against the grain now to make it taste yeah, I better. Up. More surface area. But that's like a thing chefs should know, put in. <laughs> Just saying. I'm not a sushi chef. And I'm I also a... wanted to mention that he was using these knives before. This is actually a cuttery set, Smith's Cabin and Lodge set, 15% off. So stag knot handles on them. Official stag handles. Pretty cool. All right, here we go. Mm. Wahoo is the bomb. Definitely one of my favorite fish, like, of all time to eat. We don't catch them that often, so it's always a treat when we do. Oh, so good. Right, you guys always ask, how does it taste? Simple as best. Really, you know, Wahoo is one of the top uh, e eating fish, sushi particularly, mm -hmm. and uh, just really not fishy and nice white meat and just delicious. It's really good. Great consistency. And if you do want to cook it all the way through, you just have to be really careful not to overcook this fish because it will dry out pretty quickly. And I've given it to people I've worked with in the past and people over time, and they were always like, oops, I accidentally overcooked it. It was right. dry. Just so, like other, yeah. Just like other sushi fish, like tuna. Yeah. You, know, you don't want to overcook tuna either if you're actually cooking it. But I mean, I don't, I don't cook. I don't like to cook wahoo ever. It's like a waste. Mm -hmm. Sizzle, do you think the uh, sesame seeds is sticking to one fish or the other better or worse? Mm. Seems the same to me. Some of the sesame seeds seem more cooked on some of them than the other one. Maybe mm -hmm. that's the way you cooked it, mm -hmm. or maybe that was because of the dip. The corn they cooked it. And once again, all everything that I use in this video will be in the description below. Check it out. Thank you all so much for watching. Please go ahead and comment. Let us know how you liked the video. And until our next adventure, follow, follow your, your dreams, dreams and, and keep, keep on catching. Catchin'. Full raw peace. Mm -hmm.